Well, there she is. The VTA coils are wound. Hello, YouTube. How is everybody doing today? It's uh, Thursday the 15th right now. Hope everybody's doing well. I had a couple people that requested that I showed a video on the process of winding the VTA generator coil. So uh, I'd like to share that with everyone. So here's the uh, finished product right here. Um, it is made with acrylic. This back here. Um, get it at the plastic store. I think Ace also sells it in Home Depot. Um, this is quarter inch thick. Cut it with a uh, chop saw and make sure it's a fine tooth uh, blade otherwise it'll um, it could um, make the edges real rough but if you get a nice blade it'll make nice cuts and I like the way this stuff is uh, glued together I actually use a solvent that when you put the solvent in the seam it actually fuses and welds the two pieces together so there's no actual glue it just melts these two together and it sets up in you know like 30 seconds so it's really nice to work with uh, here's some 26 gauge wire. You can find this on Amazon or eBay. I think this was about 60 or 80 dollars or so. Um, you're going to need 2,000 turns on the exciter coils on the outside, 250 turns on the inside of 28 gauge. This is an uh, outside of 2,000 is uh, 26 gauge. Um, and here's the schematic. Let's take a look at that too. The uh, if you download this off the internet, they're giving away a free coffee stain. This comes standard on every copy of this uh, for free. Pretty nice from Floyd Sweet. And um, let's see, this kind of goes over the layout. Now, the things you'll notice about this right away that are unique are these are bifiler wound coils, uh, which they don't normally use in generators. And these two coils on the bottom are feedback coils, FB. The EX2s, these are exciter coils. Then the BIF in the middle, those are uh, bifiler. So 240 turns bifiler in the middle. Um, and then on the outside of that, you're going to put the feedback winds. And there's 48 winds. If you divide 240 by 48, you come up with 5 rows so you're going to wind 48 48 48 48 five times and then put 48 winds on the outside of 28 gauge for a feedback coil and the wiring layout is all right here uh, I found it easy to label them and then connect them at the end and I was going to put this all to some like a breadboard or maybe some uh, termination blocks so that you can experiment with the different arrangements as well. Um, let's see. Yeah, so the the bobbins are made out of acrylic, and the, I used eighth inch on the uh, flanges so that uh, it was a little bit thinner, so I can get this in closer, and it would sit tighter on here. And this was really hard to find: barium ferrite magnets. Everybody has been searching for these. I have looked for two years before I found these and I actually happened to have I had to buy a bunch of them to get these um, but I do have them. I put some of the some extra ones up on eBay that I have if anybody is looking for them uh, just go to eBay search for barium ferrite and these will pull up they'll be the only ones out there I guarantee it um, very hard to find and I uh, found a unique way off of disc 15 from Tom Bearden's Energy from the Vacuum series, if anybody has seen that, from Walter Rosenthal. He shows a really uh, clever way of checking to see if his magnets were barium ferrite. And you tip it on your ohm meter, put it to ohms, to check your resistance or impedance and barium ferrite. When you look at it, we'll register it's non-conductive, so there's going to be zero ohms. If we move this to a non-barium magnet, this is strontium, look at that, you get a reading right away. And if you go to this magnet right here, same thing, you get a reading. So all these magnets will give a reading, 
of different resistance except for the barium ferrite. And Floyd Sweet said the barium ferrite is the only magnet that will work in the VTA. So anybody trying to replicate the VTA will need these magnets. Uh, strontium, he said, will not work. Um, they may work for other things, but not in the VTA. And here's a magnetizing coil setup that um, had some help uh, making all this stuff from a, a gentleman named Mike that was a genius with all this stuff. So thanks, Mike, if you're out there. Hello. So I kind of uh, uh, copied his coil design to um, get an A, B, and C coils. And this is designed so that, see if I can do this with one hand here. This goes right in there. And then this setup goes, whoa. It's easier to do with two hands, trust me. Ah, come on. Get in there. There you go. Okay. So that goes in there, and then the whole setup fits in like that. So you have three different windings. One that goes this way, one that goes this way, and one that goes that way. And these two coils right here are carrying a frequency of um, different potentials on it. And this C coil carries your magnetizing current from the capacitor bank. So go back here. And hit charge on the charging circuit. And you find which frequencies you want to test. And Right now I've been trying to experiment with harmonics, so I'll go to uh, channel one, A here, and 103.3 was the frequency I was using, and then if I go to channel B, I can just click harmonic, and I can hit the third harmonic up, and it'll automatically uh, input the frequency for me. That comes down to this power amplifier. And I don't turn the gain down on that first. Um, then once the magnetizing coil is charged up, usually get it to about a thousand volts. Uh, Sweet was using around 450, I believe, or 480. Um, this is uh, I'm using a thousand, so I don't know. Uh, we'll see what works. So just trying. Throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. You know, we're going to test a bunch of different frequencies and different um, voltages and, and uh, see what the results are. And let's see, here's a, here's a magnet that you put through the, I put through the coil setup like that with the frequencies and here's the result. You end up getting this bubble looking thing in the middle and when you put another magnet next to this, this bubble moves around very easily. The other unique thing about this that was mentioned by Walt Rosenthal in the same disc, 15, uh, was that the polarities would be flipped on all of Floyd Sweet's magnets, and he didn't know the significance of that. But when it's magnetized with the setup we just saw, it does the exact same thing. So this will be, let's see. Let's get this guy here. So you're gonna see you're gonna see a different so right now it's reading north all around the edge. Now if we go to the middle, it's gonna be south. So the, this is a south magnet, but the edges are all flipped. They're all changed to north now. So here's one of the unopened box. I have ten more of these. Barium ferrite magnets are all brand new in, uh, in the box still, so. Let's see where we're at on the charging setup. We're at about a little around 500 volts or so. That should do it enough. For, let's give that a, give it a whirl. Get our frequency set. Disengage the charging unit. Fire up the amp. You can hear the coil start humming. 
you can hear those or not, but the quills will start humming. Hit the harmonics and hit the fire, hit the trigger. And there she blows. Turn the amp off so we don't waste any of our precious energy we're trying to create here. And that will end up giving a, a pattern like that. So, and then we take it out. I'll take that out later and hook it up to the oscilloscope here, put the probe on the end of it and see uh, if there's anything unusual and then maybe give it a test on the, uh, the generator here. So the magnets he said were to go in uh, attraction mode. So um, in one of the documents that I did see they were facing uh, in repulsion mode, they were in. So uh, there was a comment that that was just an error, but uh, something to try, something to look at anyway. So I'll go over the windings one more time, real quick. These are 240 winds, five layers of um, number 20 gauge by filer, 2,000 on the exciter, 48 of number 28 gauge for the feedback coils and 250 winds of 28 gauge in the middle and 26 gauge for the 2000 so if anybody has any questions or comments on how to build them uh, if they need help or they want me to email I can email them the schematics uh, they're pretty easy to find on um, the internet though and also if anybody's looking for the barium ferrite magnets just uh, hop on over to YouTube um, no, excuse me, eBay. <laughs> We're on YouTube. Go over to uh, eBay and I uh, have a few of them left that uh, that you can grab. So take care. Hope everybody's having a great time. And the more people working on the VTA, the quicker we can get, uh, you know, we can get a working one out there. That would be a miracle. That would be what the world needs right now. All right, take care.